In today's video we'll try to find out how much we can increase the clamping force of our knobs and levers by adding these simple axial bearings. Hello and welcome to today's show. Today we'll talk about these knobs and levers that at least I use in a lot of jig and fence builds. I use them for locking down a fence in a certain position or attaching stop or reference parts to a jig. More specifically I will show how adding these cheap and simple axial or thrust bearings can increase the clamping force when that is needed. For a very large majority of the knobs and levers that you see in these jigs and fences, increasing the clamping force is not needed in any way. But there are situations when increasing the clamping force could be a very nice trick to have to prevent the parts from slipping and losing their position. The first situation when a higher clamping force might be required is if you are having low friction materials in your jigs or fences. In my shop this could for instance be seen on the drill press table where I have high pressure laminate on the fence and a lack of surface on the base and this surface meat has a quite low friction. The same can be said for my router table fence where I have an oiled and waxed fence meeting a hard waxed oil material. Number two on the list is situations when you put a lot of load or force on the fence or jig. In my case this is typically seen in some operations on the router table. But also on this jig here that I maybe will present someday where the pure weight of the jig and the gravity will give a quite high load. Number three on the list I refer to as space constraints and ergonomics. You maybe don't have room to fit the big lever that will give you enough clamping force or the knobs or levers are placed in an awkward position that won't give you full force or you may be getting older and don't have the same grip strength that you had when you were 20. If you have all these three present, or at least two out of three, you might experience slippage problems when you use your fence or jigs. To increase the sliding friction between two clamped materials without changing the materials themselves, the simplest way is to increase the clamping force as the sliding friction is directly proportional to the clamping force. And as a coincidence, there are knobs and levers that does exactly that. These ones here are commercially available, they come in both female and male versions of knobs and levers and according to the commercials to double the clamping force for a given torque. To explain the theory behind this I start with a normal screw joint. So this black thing is a screw, the lower green part has threads in it and this is a washer. And as you tighten this screw you clamp the green parts together. As you apply a torque on the screw this is divided into three main components, you have friction in the threads, you have rotational friction between the screw head and the washer, and the remaining torque is transferred into clamping force between the parts. Now we are working primarily with wood, but if this was all metal, these could be the typical figures. I found this online and I'm no metal expert by any means and don't hang me if you don't agree. But at least these are typical figures I found. 50% of the torque goes into rotational friction between the screw head and the washer, 40% goes into friction in the threads and only 10% goes into clamping force between the parts. So what's the trick then that these fancy knobs and levers use to double the clamping force? Well, it's quite simple actually. They use the thrust or axial bearing on the inside. So in our old sketch we replaced the washer with an axial bearing instead. And then what happens when we apply the same torque as before? Well, the friction in the bearing is close to zero and the remaining torque is used for friction in the threads and clamping the parts together. If we scale the figures evenly, we now have about 80% friction in the threads and 20% clamping force. These knobs and levers with integrated bearings are really nice. My friend Daniel with unlimited tool budget has this on his router table. That is the big drawback with these knobs and levers. The price is really high, between $40 and $70 each, and I haven't been able to source them on any of the cheap sites. That gave me the inspiration to test this quick and dirty solution of adding a very cheap axial bearing to an existing lever or knob. These standard knobs and levers are not very expensive, they can usually be found for a few dollars each. And these axial bearings are very cheap, these ones were around one dollar each. 
His actual bearings comes in a variety of diameters and in both needle and ball type variant. And the thing with these axial bearings is that they can handle heavy load in the axial direction. And axial direction means the same direction that we are clamping in. What is then heavy load? Well, for the needle type variant of these bearings in this dimension with an inner diameter of 8mm, the maximum dynamic load is around 800 kilograms. And that's about the same as the maximum clamping force of a Bessie parallel clamp. The ball type variant is lower than that, it's about half of the needle type and around 400 kilograms, but I would say it's still plenty enough for our applications. Another advantage well worth mentioning is that when using an axial bearing package like this, as you tighten the knob, it's only the top washer and the bearing that rotates. While the bottom washer in the package stays in a fixed position. If we compare that with a standard washer, I put a line on this one so you will see what happens sometimes when you tighten your knobs or levers, the washer rotates along with it. When you get this rotating washer phenomenon, it will cause the washer to dig into the jig and it can also cause a shift between the parts when you lock your levers or knobs as the washer applies a rotational force on them. With a fixed lower washer on the axial bearing, I get a straight vertical force when I tighten these, and no shifting. Sounds very good in theory, and on the whiteboard, adding a simple axial bearing will double the clamping force. Let's make some real world experiments and see if this is true. Measuring the clamping force between two materials is quite difficult without expensive equipment, while measuring the friction force is quite easy, so that's what we would do. And since these are directly proportional, measuring the friction force would give us a good estimate of how the clamping force is affected by these axial bearings. We start with a very basic approach to get a feeling for this and then I would go for a slightly more scientific later on. So this is a block of wood with a T-screw on the underside. I slide this into one of my T-tracks on my drill press table until this hook is in line with the dial indicator tip. In the first experiment I use a normal washer under the knob and I tighten this as hard as I can by hand. I attach a standard fishing scale to the hook and I zero the dial indicator. Then I pull this scale at the constant speed until I get the reading. So at around 5 kilograms I heard a distinct sound and the indicator also shown that the part has moved 1 millimeter. I redo this procedure a couple of times to get the mean value and then I replace the washer with an axial bearing instead. Same measurement as before but this time with this axial bearing here instead of the standard washer. I should also say that I'm not looking for a 0.01 movement that is just free play in the system. around 9 kilograms we had a quite distinct movement. I'm done with this first round of testing and so far it looks very promising for these axial bearings. The friction force is much higher and within a tighter range. This test will be performed both on MDF and high pressure laminate to see the material difference. The setup looks like this, it's two plates of MDF, they are hinged at this side and I will be pulling in this screw with a fishing scale. In this slot here I will attach the knob and clamp the two plates together. The knob I will be using for these tests is slightly modified, you see I fitted the screw with an allen head inside the knob. To attach and tighten the knob I used a screwdriver with a torque setting, this way I will tighten all my knobs with the same amount of torque and remove my grip strength from the equation. I tighten the screw on the other side with the same torque, simulating for instance a fence that is locked in two positions. The torque that is used is just below my manual grip strength and there are two reasons for that. Number one, I wanted to stay close to what I can tighten the manually to make this test realistic and I want to be able to loosen the knob between each test. The testing is done exactly as before and this first test is with a standard washer. I 
around 9.5 I think I will check that later on the video I do that test a number of times to get an average value and then I change to the axial bearing instead second test this time with an axial bearing this might very well test my arm strength it could sit quite hard around 19.5 I think first test with laminate and here I'm using a plain washer under the knob it's already starting to slide slightly at 7 then it just continues sliding new tests now I have this axial bearing under the knob the result with plain washer was around 7 kilograms Started to slide somewhere at 14. I know you're all waiting for the exciting results, so here they are. Also, here we see a huge difference between using this axle bearing and using a plain washer. I will finish off this testing with a homemade and very subjective vibration test just to get a feeling for if there is any difference between the washer and the axle bearing when it comes to how easy it is to loosen the knob with vibrations. I use the same torque setting as used through the test to tighten the knob, then I turn down the torque considerably and mainly apply vibration together with a small torque and try to loosen the knob. That was with a standard washer, I do the same test with the actual bearing to get a feeling for this. That was not one of my most scientific tests, but at least it gave a feeling for these vibrations and I couldn't tell any major difference between the washer and the axial bearing. And for our applications in woodworking, locking down fences and other stationary parts in position, I don't see any increased risk that these axial bearings should cause the knobs to come loose by themselves. And we should not forget that even if we lower the overall friction by removing this friction up here, we still have plenty of friction in the threads. How is it if we compare the needle type with the ball bearing type? I started out with these ones, I just wanted to test the concept and I used these several years of my grid press table and router table without any visible damage. But I think I'm switching to these ones, they have a higher load rating and they have bigger washers to distribute the force. Another advantage for the needle one is that the stacking height is slightly lower than for the ball type. Price wise these are about the same. I use these bearings dry without any grease or oil. That may increase the friction a little bit and reduce the lifetime. But there is not much spinning involved in these applications. And therefore I'm not very concerned about the lifetime. Using oil or grease in an open bearing construction like this. In a wood shop environment with sawdust would most likely make them cloggy and sticky after a while. These axial bearings almost sounds too good to be true, isn't there any drawbacks? Well, there are two potential ones that I would like to highlight. The first one is related to situations like this where you want to clamp two plates together and with a special requirement that you can't have any part of the knob or lever protruding on the underside. In this case I'm using a threaded insert on the lower plate and for these situations I often try to match the length of the threaded part of the knob or lever to the stack up. The thickness of a normal washer in this size is about 2 mm and the thickness of the bearing package is around 4 mm. So if I just change the washer to this actual bearing stack up I might lose some thread engagement in the lower part. This together with the fact that the axial bearing will give a higher clamping force and higher load on the threads might give you a problem with thread wear if you have short thread engagement from the beginning before switching to the axial bearing. This is a quite special case that won't happen very often but it could be good to be aware of it. The solution to this is to change to a knob or lever with longer threads. The second potential risk is related to what we use as a counterpart for the knob or lever. In this case I use a threaded insert to screw the knob into. But it could also be a T-screw going into a T-track as I used in my first round of tests.
as the axle bearing have a potential to almost double the clamping force, it has the same potential to put a much higher load on your threaded inserts or T-tracks. This is good to be aware of. And when I say load, in this case I refer to the risk to rip out the insert or the T-tracks from the base material. We have reached the end of this presentation and I'm of the opinion that if it ain't broken don't fix it. So I don't recommend you to implement these axial bearings on all your knobs and levers. But if you use them wisely it's a very cheap, simple and good trick to have for those situations when you need to increase the clamping force. Thanks for watching!